Good morning, Quadcopter101 here, and today's shout out goes to Desire Many. He was first to say first to one of my recent videos and thus wins this shout out, so congratulations. Good morning, Quadcopter101 here with a review of a new airplane, the Feijong. I'm probably or mispronouncing that because it's spelled F E I X I O N G. The Feijong Flybear. FX-816. This is another flyby aircraft, folks, uh, it's, which are normally two-channel aircraft, and so is this one here. Uh, it's a flying model of the Lockheed P-38 Lightning, if you look at it. You, know, you don't see many P-38 Lightnings, uh, especially in a, a low-cost uh, uh, beginner's airplanes, but uh, that's what we got here today here. <laughs> so, again, it's two-channel. It's ready to fly. It comes with a controller uh, and a battery and a uh, receiver already installed in it. Um, it uses differential thrust to turn, which means there is no rudder control, there is no elevator control, there is no aileron on this aircraft. All that's on here is differential thrust. Uh, if you want to turn to the right and you give it a uh, right uh, turn on your controller, this motor will turn faster than that motor and push the aircraft to the right. And if you want to turn left, uh, this motor will provide more thrust than that motor there and will turn it to the left and also bank it at the same time. Now, in the instruction manual, there is some um, reference to this being also gyro stabilized. However, I did not see any gyro stabilization written on the box. I did not see any gyro stabilization mentioned in the ad, so I really doubt that this, this one particular aircraft is gyro stabilized. Uh, we'll find out though when we actually go out in the field to fly it. Uh, but if it is not, there's I'm probably going to need to balance its center of gravity, and we're going to do that today when we go flying. And the way I'm going to do that is I always carry around with me some sticky putty that I put on the back of my controllers. And if I need to uh, balance the airplane, I put a little bit of putty on the nose or on the tail, wherever it's needed. And we're going to try that out when we go flying today, if we see that we need to add some putty. Now, what do you get with this particular aircraft in addition to the airplane? You get its instruction manual, which is very poorly written in Chinese and English. Um, it's hard, difficult to understand, but this is not a hard airplane to figure out, folks. Um, the, here's the controller, and it's basically two controls. You have throttle, and this makes you go up or down. You give it more throttle and the aircraft will climb. And if you want the aircraft to come back down, you reduce the throttle and the motors will spin less and the aircraft will descend. If you want to turn right or left, you have this stick here on the right. Now, this these type of uh, differential thrust airplanes, these little toy grade ones, you do not want to hold the stick over to turn right or left. There is no proportional control, folks. If you try to do that, these almost always flip over, okay? To turn this, you need to bump turn. You have to do little quick bumps like this until it's turning in the direction you want, then you let go. Do not hold it over. Just do quick little bumps, and that's how you turn it. So, and I'll demonstrate that when we go flying today. So, in addition to the controller, you also get a battery charger for your 3.7 volt, 300 milliamp per hour battery. Um, and also, in addition to that battery charger, you get a spare propeller. Now, why did they only give me one spare propeller? Because these two propellers are a different shape. You know, one's for the clockwise turning motor and one's for a counterclockwise. Wait, are they this? No, they're the same shape, folks. Am I right? No, they're not. No, they're not. This one turns clockwise and this one turns counterclockwise. So I only got one. I think that was probably a mistake. This is a counterclockwise turning propeller. I think that was a mistake, but... You should actually get two, but um, in my particular instance, I only got one in the box. Now, the range on this is predicted to be 200 meters. That's more than sufficient for this tiny aircraft. I'll tell you, you will not be able to see this at 200 meters. At 100 meters, it's going to be getting very difficult to see. 200 meters, it's going to be invisible. So, <laughs> this controller is more than sufficient if, if the 200 meters is true. Now, with this 3.7 volt battery, you're supposed to also get 10 minutes of flight time. We'll see if that's true today when we go flying. Uh, but if it, you know, 10 minutes of flight time, this particular battery is very common. You'll be able to find them. Let me uh, make sure it's 80, 20, 30, which means it is 8 millimeters in thickness, 20 millimeters in width, and 30 millimeters in length. For those wondering what that coding 
code is on these lipo batteries. Okay, that's the dimensions, folks. I don't know if that's focusing or not. But, you know, in, in this instance, again, it's 80, 20, 30. The first one is 8.0 millimeters in thickness. It is always thickness, the first two digits. And width and length is what it is in millimeters. So, that is the airplane. Let's take it out in the field and see how it flies. So, hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here. And we are out at one of my favorite flying fields to fly the FX-816. Okay, I have the battery already inserted. And to turn it on, there is an on-off switch right here. And you get a little blue blinking light telling you that it's looking for the controller. And we turn on the controller, blue blinking light, and then we go up and down on the throttle to bind the controller to the airplane. Okay, we have it bound to the airplane. We are ready to take off. This will be its first flight, folks. Giving it throttle. Oh, it climbs quite readily. Reducing throttle and turning to the left. Hard left. Whoa. <laughs> Trying to bring it back down. It flies quite nicely. Very nicely. Trying to bring it down. So again, I'm using bump turns to turn it. Trying to reduce the throttle even more. It wants to climb. Um, I think it actually might have gyro stabilization, folks, because it is flying rather steady. I have to go into a glide to bring it back down because it just wants to climb. Throttle back on. Bring it down lower. Let's try a left turn. Now for the left turn, I have to give it a lot more authority on the stick here. Seems to favor the right engine or the left engine more than the right. Now you really can't do tricks with this. Well, maybe you can. There, there is a way to do a loop with these two channels. I'll try to demonstrate it later if I got time here. But right now I'm just trying to see if it, how it flies. And it flies quite smooth. So yeah, I think this does have gyro stabilization, even though it's not advertised as such, because it is very smooth flyer. Very nice flyer. And you know, the original P-38 Lightnings were very easy to, well, I ain't going to say easy, but they were very nice flyers also, so. <laughs> nice design, the P-38. This was my favorite toy airplanes when I was a kid, <laughs> model airplanes. <laughs> the Lightning. Probably is for a lot of older folks out there that fly RC aircraft, probably like this airplane too. So here you go, a little cheap two-channel two version of it. Well, I don't know how cheap it is, <laughs> but a two-channel version of it, easy to fly. Beginner air, beginner's airplane. Going through the sun, I should be doing that. Bumping it to the right to turn it. But let's try those tricks I told you about. Okay, it seems to favor turn to the right. So what I'm going to do is give it throttle, more throttle, and then give it hard right turn. Hard, hard throttle, hard throttle. Getting a hard right to turn like this, and then I'm going to let go of the stick and see if it'll do a loop. Ready, set. Uh, no. The stabilization prevents it from doing a loop. <laughs> so <laughs> you're not going to do any tricks with this one. So yeah, it definitely is stabilized because of that. Um, that should have looped. <laughs> These two channels do that. The ones that don't have stabilization. It's gliding right now. Okay, turn the throttle back on. So this might fly a little more than 10 minutes. We'll find out. This is actually a wonderful plane. I'm enjoying it. Even though it's that's all you can do is turn right and left. But again, this is for beginners. This is a beginner's plane. Let's get down lower and closer. Closer. Let's see if I can do a circle around me. I'm trying to glide it, glide it. More throttle now, more throttle. It is a wonderful little plane. I, I like it. But again, it's only two channel. But it's two channel stabilized. I can see that. I, can... I don't know why they don't advertise it as such though. That's what scares me, or to actually say that it really is stabilized, but it is. It's not doing any fugoids. Flying real nice. 
and smooth and actually proportional. I thought it wouldn't be proportional, but maybe that's the stabilization kicking in here. But it is doing proportional turns, so you don't need to bump it. You don't need to bump it. Just nice, it's doing proportional turns. So yeah, this that's another clue that this does have stabilization, even though it's not advertised as such. B38 Lightning. Let's go the other way. <laughs> so I get less dizzy. Coming around, coming around. Wonderful plane. Wonderful beginner's plane. Yeah, and you could probably fly this in easily inside a gym. It turns close, you know, hard enough so that you could fly this in the summer in, the, in your local gym. Or not summer, in the winter. Do some figure eights to prove that. So, yeah, so if you're looking for a beginner's plane to teach your kid or something to fly, yeah, this would be it. <laughs> this would be a good one. I think they'd like it. Easy to fly. You just turn right or left and, and adjust the throttle to go up or down. Let's go up. Give it a little more throttle to climb. I am at, oh, where'd it go? Oh, <laughs> went in the sun. I'm at 60% uh, throttle right now and it's climbing. And let's go in the glide. Let's see it glide. Now you can still turn in the glide. Hear the motor coming on? More throttle, more throttle, get it up. I thought this would be a dog airplane, you know. I, I wasn't really impressed <laughs> because it's two channel, you know, but it's two channel stabilized. Easy to fly with one hand once you get the throttle set for altitude. I don't need to do those bumps. Oh, there goes another propeller. Propeller lost. And unfortunately, I bet, yeah, that's the propeller that I don't have. Folks, I lost the propeller. Well, we had a good flight for most of that time. <laughs> we probably could have went longer. But I don't have another spare propeller. Is it the right one? Yeah, it's the right one. And that's the one I don't have. Oh, darn. So that's the end of its flight, folks. I lost the propeller. I wish I had that spare propeller. This is the only one that I got, the one on the left here. I got another spare for that. So unfortunately, we will not be able to fly this anymore. Okay, Quadcopter 101 back again. Uh, it's later in the day. I went home and I was able to find some uh, micro quadcopter propellers for these brushless motors. They're, you know, even though I don't have any exact same propellers as what came with this drone, it's very easy to find spare propellers for, you know, you can use micro quadcopter propellers in effect for brush for brushed motor quadcopters. They're very plentiful. You find them everywhere. You can get a full set of four for about one or two dollars each. So propellers aren't an issue. Now these are the same diameter as the original propellers, which are about 60 millimeters diameter. Although these, again, they are not tri-blades. These are dual bladed, uh, but they do have more pitch in the propellers. So I'm hoping they give uh, similar thrust as the original propellers. We'll find out here shortly. Now I got a little bit of a breeze coming from the left, but I'm still gonna try to take off that way. And hopefully it will take off, we'll find out. Okay, starting it up and starting the controller, firing up the controller, connect it to the drone. Let's let this uh, little thermal breeze pass here and we'll take off as soon as it, it dies down a bit because it's gonna affect the takeoff. Okay, the breeze is, well, it's still breezy, but we'll see if we can take off. Okay, we got throttle and taking off. Took right to the air. So yeah, two-bladed propeller works, which is good. Does it work as well? We'll find out. Yeah, it works very well. 
Okay, I have to really cut the throttle, bring it back down again. Again, we got wind right now. We'll see how well this flies in the wind. I'm cutting back the throttle big time, letting it glide. There's it gliding. I gotta bring it back down here. Okay, we got a little bit of fugoids because of the wind, but it really wants to climb. I got 10% throttle on it right now. <laughs> just barely any throttle at all. I think it's actually just gliding in the thermal right now. Or that bullnose propeller gives it a lot more thrust than <laughs> I was expecting. I'm trying, I cut the throttle off completely right now to bring it back down. Yeah, that propeller is giving it a lot of thrust. You know, keep in mind, the other one was a tri-blade, but it had very narrow blades and very um, low pitch on it. These are bullnose propellers, and these are for one of my little micro racers, micro FPV racers, and they got a lot of pitch on them. So let's try a stunt, giving it more throttle. See if we can do a stunt. Let go. Will it do it? No. So, so no, I, it still won't do stunts because of the, uh, um, what do you call it? Stabilization. <laughs> Stabilization is keeping it from doing any stunts. Okay, I got the throttle turned off completely here. Trying to bring it closer again. Here it comes. But yeah, I got 10% throttle on it and it wants to climb. Just barely any throttle at all and it's climbing still. So these actually propellers are better than the originals. They're giving a lot of thrust. Yeah, a lot of pull on that. And we're seeing a little bit of fugoids there because of the wind. You know, this is not a windy day flyer. 10% throttle and it's climbing so high. Come back down here. Throttle off completely. <laughs> right turn. Come back down here. You don't want to come down. It's a good glider. It's a dang good glider. I am surprised, actually. Let's keep it close. I'm trying to keep it close, I cut the throttle off. I can just barely, it's just got barely any throttle on, on it and it just wants to climb with those props, those new props. So maybe that's why they had the, those gentler props, those tri-blades. Much gentle thrust, more gentle thrust than these. He's got too much thrust <laughs> for a dual bladed. But yeah, this is a great beginner's plane. Cutting the throttle again. <laughs> let's, let's just do circles around us. Or figure eight now. Throttle off. Throttle on, coming back again. Now, oh God, that thing just climbs like a rocket <laughs> with those props. Coming back down, coming back down, coming back down. It sounds like a jet too, don't it? Coming back down. Why don't we go over to the uh, grassy field and fly this? Or actually, let me try to do a touch and go. I'm curious if it, with the, the amount of thrust that this got, I wonder if I can do a touch and go in the dirt. Let's try it. Coming around, do some throttle. Gliding in. Nope, it's going over there. You know what, I'm gonna put, well, I was thinking of putting a little putty on there, but I don't think that's gonna affect it any. That's probably gonna adversely affect it. It's flying so well up there, but it's got a little bit of fugoid. Let me, okay, cutting the throttle off to bring it back down. 
if I put a putty on the nose, that might um, stabilize it. It'll make it fly faster, definitely. It'll fly faster, but it, it shouldn't climb like this. This is climbing too much. So let's let's see. Touch it and go. <laughs> there we go. But let me bring it back. Now let me put the putty on, like I said I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting the throttle off and bringing it back down. Come back down here. Boy, this this puppy likes to glide. I'm gonna go over there and get it. Nice landing. Nice. Okay. I like I said, I'm gonna put a little bit of this putty on the the nose of the plane. It's going to require a longer takeoff, but I'm hoping it'll smooth out the, the oscillations just a little bit with these new props. And I won't make it climb like that. That's just, <laughs> I want it to stay down here low instead of climbing. So all I'm doing is, is placing some putty on the nose of this. So hold on, folks. Okay, I wrapped it around the landing gear, the four nose landing gear, to get it to stick. I'm putting it back on the dirt. That's impressive that this actually can take off from dirt. <laughs> Most of these little two channels can't do that. But give it a throttle. Oop, turn the transmitter back on. Rebinding. Giving throttle. Yep, needed a little bit more runway. It's flying a bit faster. I'm hoping it won't climb like before as much. Cutting back the throttle. Yeah, it's flying smoother now. But it still wants to climb. <laughs> those, those dual bladed bull nose props are just too much thrust on that. Those are from a micro FPV racer, uh, FX90 <laughs> micro FPV racer, and they, they are very good props. <laughs> Give you that. But I'm cutting the throttle off to bring that thing back down here again. Here it comes, just gliding. No throttle. More throttle, just a little bit of throttle. Just trying to level it. You know, fly gentle. I like this plane, you know that? It's only a two-channel plane, but it's interesting the way it flies. Uh -oh, a little few going there, going into the wind, cutting the throttle. Bring it in close so you can see it. Let's fly close now. I'm going to fly at hard turns. And make it to uh, turn to the right. Ooh, that's, now I'm busy. Do some throttle, turn it harder to the right. Yeah, neat plane, folks. For a two channel. This is one of the better fly bears. <laughs> I'll give you that. Better flying fly bear. Probably one of the best, the best of the fly bear series. Whoa. Almost nipped the ground there. Coming around again. Turn it hard to the right. Yeah, this definitely stabilized. Any other two channel would have rolled over on me. You can actually do proportional steering with it. Going around again. Coming toward me, I'm going to the right now. I'm going to the left, hard turn to the left. Give a little more throttle there so it didn't hit the ground. <laughs> Yeah, when you let go of the stick, if you're making a hard turn, if you let go of that stick, you better 
just don't let go of the uh, steering. When you're making a hard turn, let me explain that. Coming around again. Where you at? There you are. When you're making a hard turn, gently lay off the throttle. Don't don't let it off rapidly or else it will climb and it will stall um, as it tries to do a loop. Um, the stabilization will fight that, but you know it'll, it'll still try to climb up again like it's trying to do a, a trick. Where'd you go? And I got a little bit of thermal breezes coming through here right now. Yeah, it's a good flyer. Flying fast now with that, there goes a nice breeze, just hit it. So we'll see how it flies in the wind. Thermal breeze too, it's a strong thermal. But it's flying it. And don't care. Come back that throttle there, bring it back down again. Give it a little more throttle to keep it going. Going to the right. So yeah, the stock props make it fly more gentle. And these bullnose props give it a lot of thrust. <laughs> um, flies more aggressive. I would try to... Now, like I said, you can find props for this just about anywhere. Any micro quadcopter prop should work in this. Okay, the motor's getting a little bit sluggish now. I have to give it about half throttle now to stay in the air. <laughs> Before I was only given 10% throttle, so we're going to call it quits here shortly. Let me go downwind and bring it in for a landing. Turning around and see the wind picking up in the trees there, folks. I'm going to bring it into the wind, cutting throttle, gliding in, gliding in, and I'll give you my summation here shortly. Throttle off. Now we'll go into the bushes here. So hold on, folks. Okay, overall, this is a nice beginner's airplane. You know, a nice learn-to-fly two-channel RC airplane. Um, very simple in design, simple to operate, just, you know, throttle and turning. So I hope you enjoyed this flight. Let's get, I probably got about another minute or so of flight time, but I ain't going to fly it till the battery's dead. But I just wanted to try hand launching it. I didn't do that yet. So let's see if we can hand launch this. Oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> so... Again, this is the P-38 Lightning from Flybear, FX-816 version. Nice flyer. Nice little aeroplano. <laughs> Coming around, hard left. In the sun. Going around, hard right. And yeah, the throttle's getting low, so we're gonna call it quits. So this is Quadcopter 101. Hope you enjoyed this flight. Quadcopter 101, signing out. <laughs> Signing out, folks. I enjoyed it. Hi, Quadcopter101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.